Hi, today I'm going to talk about how we can experimentally measure the J integral of some material. And uh, if you remember from my last video, I introduced the definition of the J integral, and I wrote down a number of different ways to, to define the J integral according to theory. Here are two of the ways that I like the most. The first one is the classical approach from Rice, and the next one is just a more of a tensorial approach that I think is clearer and cleaner. Now, these are very nice expressions, obviously, but how do we measure these things? What do we do to experimentally to actually measure these quantities? And uh, to describe how we do that, we need to go back to the definition of the J-integral a little bit. What is it all about? So the J-integral is really just the energy release rate. So how much does the energy change as a crack growth? And we remember, of course, that a crack will grow if the J-integral is larger than the critical value for a given material. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how this is done uh, experimentally. So there is one very easy way to describe that, and that's the idea that you have a tension specimen, for example, with a known crack in it. Uh, here is a picture that a crack size is um, A in length. And if I take this specimen and I pull on it, and I measure the force displacement response of the specimen, I may get the blue curve here. So it's a force displacement curve of a specimen with a given crack in it. Now, say I have another specimen of the same material that has a slightly longer initial crack. So the crack is A plus DA, and then I do the same force displacement test on that specimen. And since the crack is a little bit longer, it's, it's a little bit softer in its response to forces are lower, and we may get the red curve here. So this is for a specimen with a slightly longer initial crack. Now, the difference between these two curves is the energy that would be released if the crack were to grow. So that is directly what we can use in the definition of the J integral. So the J integral as a function of that crack size A would then simply be the area between the curves divided by the, the length difference of the initial crack. And then also B is the width of the specimen. So make it by unit area. So that's kind of a very clean picture of how this goes in an experimental test. So you can repeat this type of testing with different crack sizes and things like that. And that will give you a whole map of the J value for a given material. And that's exactly what the ASTM standard is talking about. Here is one that talks about the J integral, in fact, the J resistance curves uh, for a plastic material. If you're interested in doing these tests, there are multiple labs that can do it, but you can also read the standard and do it yourself. Now, there's one more concept here that I think is worth mentioning when it comes to uh, the J integral, and that's something that's called the resistance curve. So a crack will grow, <clears throat> as we've talked about, if J is larger than some kind of critical value. I'm going to call it R for resistance. But that really doesn't tell you if what happens once J reaches that value. Will the crack just grow uh, really fast and the whole thing will fail? Or is it a stable crack growth at that point? And that's easy to kind of explore this a little bit more. So here's the condition for crack growth. But if we take the derivative of this equation with respect to crack length, so dj dA, and co compare that to the RDA, so if dj dA is less than the amount of the resistance change with crack size, then it's a stable crack growth. And uh, the opposite is if uh, the JDA is larger than the RDA, then it's an unstable crack growth. And what you can do experimentally, you can measure the resistance curves and the different ways to do it. Here are just two examples left and right. In this case, on the left, we have a curve that goes straight up, and then we get an unstable crack growth at that point. As the force is so large that the J interval reaches this point, we will get unstable crack growth. In this case, here to the right, it's a little bit more realistic for ductile polymers and other ductile materials. We have a slope that's not absolutely vertical. What happens here is the crack actually blunts a little bit initially, and that gives you that shape. But there's a stable growth of that crack's length until we reach an unstable condition given by this uh, condition. So these are things you can measure, and this is how it applies. So to summarize, it is very possible, in fact, it's not that hard to experimentally measure the J integral, the critical value, and the resistance curves from experiments on standardized test specimens. 
The ASTM standard has two very specific geometries they recommend. You can see them in the figure here. And that's, that's how people typically do it experimentally. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.